In this section, we're going to kick off our next big feature inside the Go programming language. So in this video, in the next couple, we're going to start talking about channels and Go routines. Channels and Go routines are both structures inside of Go that are used for handling concurrent programming. And so we're going to get a good sense of exactly what concurrent programming means or what concurrency means. We're going to first start off all this discussion by writing a little program that we're going to write in a very naive or straightforward fashion. And we're not going to use any of this fancy concurrency stuff. We're going to write out the program. We're going to observe that it's got a couple of problems with it. And then we'll figure out how we can use some of these concurrency things inside of Go to fix our problem or fix our program and make it work more in the way that we expect. So let's start off by talking about what we're going to build. OK, so we're going to build a tiny little program that it's meant to be a sort of status checker for some common websites that exist online. So we're going to make this little program that takes a list of very common or very popular websites and makes an HTTP GET request to each of these sites. And so the idea here is that we might be checking to make sure that each of these websites are up and responding to HTTP traffic. So we could kind of imagine that maybe we would run this program several times a day and say, OK, it looks like all these websites are up and visible, or no, maybe this one's down, and we need to log out some status message that indicates that, hey, it looks like you know Facebook is down because it's unreachable. So again, we're going to write out this program in a very straightforward approach to start. We're going to observe that there's a couple of issues with our implementation, and then we'll figure out how we use these Go routine things and these channel things to fix the program up. So with that in mind, let's get to it. I'm going to flip on over to my code editor, and I'm going to make a new project directory. So we'll hit Open. I'm going to make a new folder, and we'll call this one about channels. And we'll open up this directory, and then make our main.go file inside of it. So we'll say main.go. And then we'll start off with the very usual code that we're very used to writing by this time. We'll say package main and func main, like so. OK, so the actual program or the logic inside of it for this very first iteration through that we're going to take a very straightforward approach with is not going to involve any code that we haven't really written before. So we're going to list out a couple of very common websites, like these ones right here. We're going to list out the actual URLs for each of them inside of a slice of type string. Then we'll loop through that slice. And for every URL inside the slice, we will attempt to make an HTTP request in the same exact way that we did just a little bit ago. If we are then able to successfully make the request, we'll print out a success message. But if there is an error with the request at all, any type of error whatsoever, we'll print out a message that says, hey, it looks like maybe facebook.com or golang.org.com is down. Or not golang.org.com, just golang.org, excuse me. So let's get to it. Back inside my code editor, I'm going to first start off by making a slice of type string and listing out a couple of these different websites. So we'll say inside of our main function, links, so that's going to be the name of all the different URLs that we want to fetch, is going to be of type string, slice of type string to be clear. And then we'll list out a couple of these different websites. So we'll say http slash slash google.com slash slash Facebook.com. We'll say Stack Overflow. And we'll just do two more. Let's say HTTP golang.org and Amazon.com. OK, so do make sure you have .coms on all these, except for Golang, which is a .org. And do make sure that you list out the protocol as well. Remember, with the HTTP module, inside of Go that we're making use of, it expects to see the entire protocol in front of the actual domain. So we do have to say the full HTTP colon slash slash. And then also do make sure that you get a comma at the end of every line, including the very last entry in here as well. OK, so now we can iterate over this slice right here. And for every single URL inside of it, we're going to make an HTTP request. So we'll first set up our for loop to loop over all these different links. Now, we don't really care about the index of any of these entries in here. Like The index is kind of meaningless for us. So we're going to ignore the index variable that we get passed inside the for loop by placing an underscore. But we will receive the second argument, which is going to be the actual element that we are iterating over. So in this case, just we'll call it a link. We'll say colon equals, range, and then the slice we are iterating over, which is going to be links. 
Now inside this function, I think that, or excuse me, inside this for loop, I think that it would be kind of intelligent to maybe not make the actual HTTP request directly in here. I think that maybe we should put together a separate function to make the actual request and decide whether or not the website is responding to traffic or not. So let's take a quick break and then continue in the next section and put together this function to take every single link and make an HTTP request to it. So quick break and I'll see you in a minute.